Over the past few months of following the SRC international trial, one of the things we learned from various witnesses who took the stand was that the transactions that involved Najib Razak's bank accounts formed a tangled and convoluted web. Today, this was again highlighted through the way money was moved from SRC to construction firm Putrajaya Pradhana to Najib's account and back to SRC. While the former Prime Minister evoked a sense of being on top of things while running Malaysia, these money flows in the guise of donations were done by the former Prime Minister's associates, including fugitive businessman Lo Teck Jo. By the Malaysian insight, this is the people versus Najib Razak. Follow us into the courtroom where it all happens. I'm Patrick Teo. Day 47 of Najib's SRC international trial got off to a later start at 2 p.m. A group of around 20 men were waiting for Najib at the court lobby. Dressed in a black pinstriped suit with matching tie, the former premier got out of his car and greeted the men who were waiting for him. They accompanied him to the fifth floor courtroom where his SRC international trial was being heard. In the morning, lawyers from both the prosecution and defense teams were at the Court of Appeal in Putrajaya. They were appealing to adjourn the 1MDB trial that is scheduled to start on August 19th. Both sides wanted to wrap up the SRC case first. High Court Judge Colin Lawrence Sakera, who is presiding over the 1MDB trial, had earlier rejected the prosecution's request to postpone proceedings. Today, the appellate court also dismissed the application to delay the trial. Najib's lead counsel, Shafi Abdullah, said he will immediately file an appeal with the apex court, the federal court. In his 1MDB trial, Najib faces 25 charges of money laundering and abuse of power for receiving more than 2.28 billion ringgit from the Sovereign Wealth Fund into his Ambank accounts between February 2011 and December 2014. Back at the High Court, Joanna Yu was on the witness stand for the third week. She was Ambank's relationship manager, handling 1MDB's and Najib's accounts. Defence lawyer Harvinder Jit Singh was cross-examining her. Harvey was still going through chat logs extracted from Joanna's BlackBerry phone. There are 500 pages to sift through. The lawyer was asking the witness about the 170 million ringgit which was transferred out of SRC to Putra Pradhana, a firm linked to Joe Lo. Out of the 170 million ringgit, 27 million ringgit was transferred into Najib's 880 account and 5 million ringgit was transferred to his 906 account, both at Ambank. Ray, what else transpired in the chats between Joanna and Joe Lowe? Between August and September 2014, Joe was telling Joanna that the two transactions to Najib's account had to be reversed, preferably by the end of that year. Joanna told him the reversals was easier to do via cheques, but Joe said MNR was in Hawaii at the time and did not have checkbooks with him. At the same time, she was urging Joe to close the Mbank accounts as they were constantly overdrawn. Joe replied by saying MNR didn't want to close. By December, the reversals still weren't done. Both accounts didn't have enough balance to do so. The 880 account had 6.8 million ringgit. The 906 account was overdrawn by 3.8 million ringgit. This was when Ng Su Lin came into play. She was the former CEO of Yayasan Rakyat Satu Malaysia or YR1M. Joanna told the court that it was possible that Su Ling was instructed to move money from Esan Perdana to Najib's 880 and 906 account to make up the shortfall so that the reversals could take place. Esan Perdana was SRC's charitable arm. Najib was not paying attention to any of the exchange between his lawyer and the witness. He had his elbow propped up on the dock and was looking down at his phone. 
After grilling Joanna for about two hours, Harvey requested for a ten-minute break. Najib went out to sit at the benches outside the courtroom. There, he chatted with some of the supporters who had greeted him at the lobby in the morning. After the break, Harvey was firing questions at Joanna. She barely had any time to explain her answers before the lawyer quickly moved on to the next question. The lawyer told her that the reversal that Joe Lowe requested was to zero-rise transfers from Putra Pradana Construction. Joe had told her that the funds were donations from royalty when in fact they were advances. He put to the witness that Joe Lowe had deceived her on numerous instances on the movements of these funds. Joanna said he never gave her a reason why he needed to do the reversals. Before wrapping up for the day, Harvey apologized to the judge that he could not finish his cross-examination today. He said he needed at least an hour and a half. The judge confirmed this twice with him and adjourned the court for the day. Proceedings will resume at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Joanna will be back again, hopefully for her final day of questioning. This podcast is produced, written and mixed by Rivati Supramaniam, Yappik Kwan, Yvonne Lim and Ravin Palanisami. Additional reporting by Timothy Acharyam. I'm Patrick Teo.